Thank you all for coming. I'm Meredith and I hope you all know why you're here. I have been riding around the country for the last three years with my horse Apollo. Uh, if you haven't got a chance yet to look in the back, there is a map with, I'll show you in a second too, but there's a map uh, that shows my whole route. The black line is where I've been so far and the yarn is where I am planning on going from here out. Um, and there's also uh, Scotcheroos and Ohio Buckeyes, so make sure to grab a snack. They do have all the bad stuff in them. I'm sorry, there's no sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan options here. Um, and there's also bookmarks and business cards. Go ahead and grab one of those. And if you're interested in seeing what I've written about this ride so far or hearing more stories, there are uh, example copies of the books in the back which are for sale at our local open book bookstore on Maltman Drive so go on over there and support a local business um, or Amazon but we prefer local businesses so um, let's see also uh, little shameless self-promotion really quick I have a podcast that I'm getting ready to launch uh, on March 15th so uh, if you like listening to podcasts, it will be available wherever you normally find your podcasts, and you can get mine as well. There'll be weekly episodes all about different stuff about this ride. So, um, before I get started, uh, if you need to get up at any time, feel free to leave in the middle. I won't be offended, maybe just a little bit. Uh, and... If you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand and ask them right away. Don't feel like you need to wait till the end. Um, I have a terrible memory and I'm gonna assume everyone else does too, so go ahead and ask me your questions anytime. And there are no stupid questions. There are a few stupid questions, but go ahead and ask them anyway because maybe someone else has the question too. Uh, how many people have been, do you have a question already? I do. All right. <laughs> Are you going to explain why you took this particular route? How did you choose your route? I will explain okay. how I chose my route since you asked on the next slide when I get the map up there. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. How many people here have been to one of my previous presentations? Yay. All right. Um, so hopefully, if the library is willing to let me do this again, I will do another slideshow next year uh, with my upcoming year's rides photos. Uh, I try to do one every year. And so um, definitely look for that next winter as well. Uh, so let's get started. All right, here is my route. The starting point was right here in Penn Valley. I went out to the coast. This was on January 1st, 2017. Who was there for my send-off event at the Penn Valley Rodeo Grounds in the rain? <laughs> all right. Um, so it rained all the way up to about there. And that was three months. I took a break in Seattle and... Uh, then when the snow cleared to get over the Cascades in May, I went uh, over to Idaho, uh, Nevada, up, uh, touched into Montana, and down through the Rockies, lots and lots of mountains, four corners. I did four states in three and a half minutes. <laughs> and I uh, then was really glad when I got out of the mountains and had nice, boring, boring, boring Kansas to ride through, and I stopped here for the winter. So that was the first year. Um, that was pictures I did in, uh, af you know, I already did those slides, so if you missed them, sorry, we're not going to cover that again. Um, but I ended there for the winter, and that was a extra long year because normally I don't ride in the winter but it was I was able to do that on the coast so I was able to start a lot earlier and take a much longer year the second year 
I rode from Kansas City up uh, to the, through the Dakotas and over to Chicago. So all Midwestern states, a lot of flat, a lot of corn, a lot of soybeans, a lot of nice people. And then this year, which is of course what you're here to see, I started south of Chicago, went up to Michigan, uh, down to Kentucky, across Ohio, through Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont, and New Hampshire. And New Hampshire is where, oh, and there was West Virginia in there too. I didn't mention it because it was like there. Um, that was not very much. Uh, and so Apollo's in New Hampshire, south of Manchester. And that's where we ended this winter. I board him for the winters and he just stays put wherever I was uh, able to get to for the year and waits for me to come back in the spring. It's a lot easier and cheaper than hauling him back and forth across the country every winter. So when I go back in May, I will be going to uh, New Hampshire, saddling up and going up to Maine and then following the coast all the way down to Florida and then up to Tennessee and ending in Memphis area. I don't know if this will just be one more year ride or if it will be a year and a little bit more, but somewhere around there, a year-ish. Um, so, so far I've gone to, anyone know how many states I've gone to? Because I'm trying to remember right now. Okay, 31 states. <laughs> Uh, 8,000 miles so far, and so I have another 17 states to go. Right, Mom? <laughs> she's a math tutor. If anyone needs a math tutor, she's great. Um, so I have another 17 states to go and several thousand more miles. I don't really know exactly how many, but maybe around 3,000-ish miles to go. Uh, so the way that I picked the route, I actually have a whole podcast episode that I just recorded that'll be released in the end of March, so you should listen to that for all the details. But to summarize, uh, it's basically the shortest way I could come up with to go to all 48 states. Some states I'm obviously in a long time, and some states I'm only in for a few minutes, or like 45 seconds if you're talking about the four corners. Uh, but the, uh, it's basically just the shortest way that I can get where I need to go. And sometimes I take detours for, uh, like if there's a mountain pass or like a great lake in the way or something like that. And I have to go around, but generally I try to be just going from state to state in an efficient sort of way. Uh, and then the day-to-day -day route is based on where I can find people to stay with. And that's the big challenge of the ride, is finding places to stay each night, because I only go 10 to 15 miles a day. I'm, I go almost exclusively at a walk. Sometimes I ride and sometimes I walk, but Apollo always walks. And uh, so it's not very many miles per day, and that means I have a lot of people that I have to connect with. And I do that through Facebook, through good old fashioned networking. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's been some, other, sometimes I have to call, just cold call, like Google boarding stables in the area and just start calling stables. But usually I can find it just with networking. So um, any questions about the map? Yeah, Bob. Not directly about the map, about uh, Apollo. Yeah. similar with Apollo. Does he get pissing? And when you come back, it takes a few days or weeks to re uh, he, He's kind of the opposite. So when I come back, he does a double take. He's like, oh, there's someone. Oh, it's you. 
and he gets really excited and he's very excited to get back to work he just wants to go he's really hard to saddle the first day because he's just like we're going we're going all right let's put that saddle on hurry up and uh so then we get going and he wants to trot the whole first day and um he settles down within about a day or two and then after about a month he's like oh yeah, this is a lot of work. Maybe I'm not actually happy to see you anymore. But then after that little hump, then, then uh, he settles into his job really well. And, and uh, it takes about a month for us both to get back into peak physical shape uh, after the winter off. And uh, so that's part of that, that end of the month hump is like, yeah, I'm kind of tired now but not too tired, like I'm not pushing him too hard, it's just we're exercising a lot. And so after that, then it's, it's smoother sailing. And you said Apollo, in the book, you said Apollo likes things quiet. So how do you do on the road? Are you on like the county roads? You're not on major highways or anything? I'm on whatever roads I have to be on. And you'll, wow. see, you'll see coming up in here in some pictures uh, what kind of roads I've been on. <laughs> so here's... Uh, this is actually from the previous year, but it's a good example of, of my setup. So Apollo's got all these bags, my saddle's tucked in there, I squeeze in the middle there, and uh, I wear a vest with a whole bunch of pockets full of stuff and a GPS uh, for safety and a helmet, and um, he wears boots, not horseshoes. And uh, that's for protecting his feet on the roads. And he also wears bells, which are um, for multiple reasons, mostly so everybody can hear us coming, wildlife and people. Uh, and they just sound nice. Um, so that's, that's what we look like when we're going down the road. And so here's the states we went to the first year. I try to take a picture at every border with the welcome sign. Mm -hmm. And here's the second year. <laughs> And here is this year. So our first state was Indiana. I was actually already in Indiana when I started, but um, I didn't get to take a welcome sign picture till a couple weeks later. Um, but anyway, this was uh, at the Michigan-Indiana border. And so we started off in May uh, in North Judson, Indiana. And we were able to take a, a rail trail the first day, which was awesome. So rail trails, if you've never heard of them or been on them, they are old railroad tracks that have been ripped out and made into multi-purpose trails. And so they're just this lovely, flat, straight, trafficless, wonderful trail. Most of them allow horses, but not all of them. But this one did. Uh, and so I was able to take that, which was great because the first day is all frisky and it's stressful to have to deal with cars. So I was able to just go and let him get out all his sillies on the first day with nobody around. And uh, it was a beautiful first day. And uh, here's one of the places we stayed in the first week. Um, Indiana is very pretty. Um, and this was in someone's backyard. They had horses in a separate pasture, but it's a very pretty area. Uh, this is Bass Lake in the North Judson area. And this was a weird thing. Um, in the town of Toto, uh, Indiana, they have this, this is like why people go to Toto because it's got Bailey's Discount Center. And the lady I was staying with near here, she was like, we have to go there. You have to see this. This is like the best store in the world. We, I, you, you just have to see it. So we went to Bailey's and it was kind of like, um, I don't know, like a Costco or something without the food. But, um, no, there was food too. It was kind of like Costco, but grocery outlet quality, I guess you could say. So... Anyway, it was, a, it was a thing. So I got to go see that, the big excitement of Indiana. Uh, here's Apollo meeting his neighbors one night. They were um, very silly. 
they didn't really get along, but they wouldn't leave each other alone. Even though they had plenty of room to not be near the fence, they decided they had to do this all night. All night. Kick, bang, squeal. Um, but I like the picture. It's, it's the picture. main flying. <laughs> So Paulo had never seen a cart, a horse-drawn vehicle of any kind, and I was coming up on Amish country at this point and decided maybe he needed to know what that was. And so this lady that I'd been staying with for the night uh, offered that she would like to come along with me for my day's ride and that she'd drive her little pony. And so we did. Um, sometimes I have people come with me, not very often, but it happens. And so she drove along and Apollo snorted at it a little bit and then he was okay with it. And then he spent most of the ride trying to chew on it. So I guess he was fine with it at that point. Um, and, uh, so he was okay with this cart pretty quick within a mile, but it turns out that this cart was not the same in his opinion as an Amish buggy. Amish buggies are monsters, and he would have nothing to do with them, uh, but this one was okay. All right, this was a uh, Catholic college and cathedral and retreat center I was invited to stay at, and uh, so they had this beautiful church here, cathedral, and then they had this retreat center. My room was right there with the lake view. It was... Uh, very pretty place to stay. They asked me to do a slideshow. No one except here ever gets a slideshow, so you're very lucky people. Um, but they asked me to do one, and so I threw together a summary of the entire ride up to that point that was going to be like a 30-minute slideshow. So I'm going to talk to you for nearly two hours about just this year. They wanted two full years in 30 minutes. I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. So I made one real quick. And uh, anyway, it was a good little slideshow, but if I do say so myself. Uh, here's a round barn that was just kind of neat. They're not very common. There's some uh, stories I heard about superstitious, superstitious reasons for having a round barn, like ghosts and keep them out of the corners or something like I don't know. But anyway, it was cool looking. Uh, here's some Mershams, as they call them in Indiana. This is, it was morel season. And um, who here has had morel mushrooms? Have, who has had fresh morel mushrooms? Oh, yeah, that's the ticket. Uh, these are gourmet stuff and they grow wild in Indiana at certain times of the year such as when I was there and everybody was just all about the mushrooms when I was there and when it's mushroom season there and they say mushrooms or mushrooms they are talking about morels they they if you hear the word mushroom and it's morel season they simply mean morels they there's no other mushrooms worth mentioning at that point um <laughs> So that was a delicious little surprise there. There's a nice person I met in uh, Plymouth, Indiana. She direct, she's the director of the Heminger House there that is their uh, shelter for women. And so they invited me to come and see their shelter. It's in a historic gold building not sure it's really historic. It's kind of old. It looked like it should be a historic building anyway. Uh, so anyway, we try to stop at as many uh, shelters and crisis centers and that sort of thing as possible. So it was nice to be able to stop there. And I actually saw her at her daughter's house in a few slides that you'll see also. I think I put her in there again. Usually when I see someone, it's just for that evening. And then, you know, I show up at their house, they've invited me to stay, uh, and I see them that evening, I see them the next morning, and then I leave, and that's the end of it. Maybe we're Facebook friends after that, but I never see them again. But every once in a while, there's someone that just keeps showing up, and uh, so Diane was one of them. So here's another lady that accompanied me for a bit of my ride. 
with her little pony, who had never been on the road before, but he did good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. When someone asks to come with me for part of the ride, and they know I ride on the roads, I assume that they are a good enough horse person and have a good enough horse to do this. And usually they do. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had any real disasters yet. Um, okay, so here's South Bend, Indiana. Uh, stopped at the YWCA there and met with some of the staff and a whole lot of the uh, women that stay at the shelter there. And uh, so that was really nice. And a few kids. We rode right through downtown South Bend, which is a rather large town. Um, it's, a, it's a college town, university town, but it's, it's big. Um, it took the better part of a day to get across, so there's a lot of traffic. Uh, here's the Michigan border. I only just dipped into Michigan. You see, it went 16 miles into Michigan, um, and that's up and back. So eight miles in and then eight back again. Uh, and back into Indiana, we finally reached Amish country. Here are those scary buggies. I actually was able to stay with an Amish family, uh, which was really cool. The Amish tend to be kind of a closed community. They, you know, they'll, you can go to their tourist shops and buy butter or whatever, but um, they they don't tend to socialize with the English, as they call us. But I met someone who was friends with an Amish family in Napanee. And so she drove me over there to meet them because, you know, you can't call them and leave a message. And so actually you can. But anyway, it was, it was more polite in, to go over and meet them. So she drove me over there. And we met, and they said I could come stay. So I rode there and stayed with this Amish family, and they even gave me a buggy ride around the block, which was just so sweet. Um, very interesting, very interesting evening. I could probably just talk for half an hour about the amazing time staying with an Amish family, um, but I don't have time for that. So let's move on. Oh, there's Diane again. Uh, stayed in her daughter's back, or Apollo stayed in her daughter's backyard. I stayed in the guest room, but uh, he, uh, he was right in the downtown backyard. And uh, you can see we sat out on the porch all evening because it was beautiful weather and he just hung out on the porch with us. There's the, uh, the awning right there. He just hanging out in the shade with Diane. Uh, he's pretty laid back about wherever we stop for the night. Oh, donuts, a uh, very important part of my ride. Uh, and these are Amish donuts. Um, at least it used to be an Amish bakery and now it's been bought out, but they still use the Amish recipe. Um, these ones here are called Amish crack. That is their specialty. It's a cinnamon sugary wonderfulness donut. And these are peanut butter cream filled. And yes, I remember these things because they're important <laughs> and memorable. Um, here's Apollo's first parade. Uh, he was the only horse in the parade. And every parade needs a horse, right? So uh, this was actually um, started in, that, in front of where that backyard picture was taken. Uh, the parade started right in front of their house the next morning, and I said, cool, can I come and be in your parade? And they said, certainly. And so I uh, took him through the parade, and it was intense. It's not something that I realized how intense of a situation it was going to be for Apollo until we started going, and there's flags, and there's people, and there's children, and the the car in front of us uh, was throwing out frisbees to the crowd, and then the crowd was throwing frisbees to their friends across the street, and there were frisbees flying everywhere, and it was just insane. But we did it, and it was fine. Uh, 
So yeah, it's really, except for the Frisbee thing, it's really not that different, I guess, from our normal life of going down the road with all sorts of crazy stuff, but um, it, was, it was fine. He wasn't sure about the Frisbees, but he got over it. Uh, this place was odd. Um, so you said that Columbia City, sort of. Columbia City was probably a good five or ten miles from there. There was nothing. This was a pig farm. <laughs> Literally. Like, this was, there was farmland, there was corn, there was I don't know what, because it was the spring and not everything had been planted or was sprouting yet, but just miles and miles of flat Indiana farmland and hog farms and then this little gift shop on the side of the road that said Margie's place open I was like what that's weird why is there a gift shop in the middle of nowhere Indiana and so I had to stop and go inside and it was a really cute little gift shop with like country uh gifty things <laughs> decorations all sorts of quilting supplies um, so anyway weird stuff and it was really just out in the middle of nowhere so um, just a fun little thing I came across there's some people who joined me on the road <laughs> and the Indiana rural road there's the town of Huntington which was a pretty little town this over here is uh, a root beer shop. They have every kind of root beer that you can possibly imagine. I think it had other kinds of sodas too. I don't remember now, but all of these bottles are different brands of soda. And uh, you could get just the soda or you could get a root beer float. And uh, who here knows what a little free library is? All right, little free libraries are uh, personally, privately run little boxes like this that people put in front of their houses or their businesses and you can just get a book, give a book, whatever. There's no checkout thing that you need to do like the wonderful library here, but it's, you know, it's just a community thing. And so this one is a little free library that matches the house and I thought that was so cute. Ah, Ivanhoe's. Uh, in the town of Upland, it is the thing to do in the town is to go to Ivanhoe's and get a strawberry shortcake a la mode. That is a strawberry shortcake. It was massive <laughs> and um, definitely worth the stop. And it's on the, the Garfield Trail. So Garfield over here that I'm posing with that is part of a bigger Garfield statue trail that you can go on and see all the different Garfield statues because uh, Garfield creator Jim Henson? No, oh, not Jim yeah. Henson. Jim da sorry? Davis. Davis. It's Jim something. Jim Davis um, is from the area. So he's got you know, all these Garfield statues all over because of that. Uh, here's a covered bridge and more people joining us to back up a traffic there <laughs> so this is one of those situations where they'd never ridden on the road before but they wanted to try it and this was actually in a town the boarding stable was literally right on the edge of the town and I had to go through the town so they're like oh we'll ride for with you for a little ways fine their horses were fine but they didn't know what they were doing so anyway they should have been riding over here and <laughs> letting the cars go past, but Mary, that's okay. Yeah. Did Apollo have any issues going through the covered bridge? That's what I was thinking. No, he doesn't care. <laughs> no. It's, it sounds, <coughs> when you go in one, it's kind of like just walking in a barn. You know, it's a big wooden, wooden floor, wooden everything. Kind of sounds like when you go in an old barn. So at least that's what I assume it sounds like to him too. But yeah, it's not a problem. They're kind of better than regular bridges because you can't see out. You know, you can't see that there's a, a drop off or whatever. 
Um, he doesn't really care about regular bridges either, but I do, so I prefer the covered bridges. So, um, so anyway, I tried to stay off on the side of the road, and she wasn't doing that. But anyway, it was a cute picture. So they rode with me for about a mile and decided that they'd had enough and went home. Uh, lots of kids. Anytime I ride through a town, there's so many kids that want to come up and pet Apollo, and that's great. Apollo loves it. I love it. The kids love it. So uh, I try to stop anytime a kid comes up and wants to pet him, and he got swarmed in this yard. So, um, And he just... He might be eating there, but even if he wasn't, he just drops his head and lets them pet him because he just loves the attention. So he's a total attention hog. He also likes getting his picture taken. So he's all about this trip. So he gets his picture taken and gets attention quite a lot. Uh, this is the town of Liberty, which is right on the Ohio border. Uh, it is... A really nice town. It was one of my favorite towns that I've ever ridden through. This is the county courthouse. Wow. County courthouses in the Midwest are all unique and I could always look forward to riding through the county seat because I knew I was going to see a beautiful old unique building and they're always fabulous but they're all different. Like this one looked like a, a kind of old castle and some of them look like a manor and some of them look like some sort of I don't know but they're they're just they're all just fabulous so um, this was their beautiful courthouse and uh, old settler building that they put out on the courthouse lawn and this was a the cemetery over here and a road and then some random tombstones. I couldn't figure out why they were there, but I thought it was interesting that they weren't in the rest of the cemetery. There are a few more tucked over here, like around the side of the building that weren't in the picture. I don't know why. Maybe they ran out of room and they just randomly put people across the street. The business was closed, but it was definitely a business at one point. So I don't know. It was weird. Um, maybe they made tombstones. Maybe, except why would they have buried people if they were making the tombstones? Why would they have actually had graves on their lawn? Maybe they weren't people actually buried there. Maybe they were just for show and tell. Demo. They didn't really look like show and tell. Like well, they I weren't know. they weren't arranged in a way that was like, look at these beautiful tombstones we make. You know, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think actually it was a family plot of the people that owned that building. It could have been a family plot of the people that own the building. In town, though? Uh, anyway, weird. Um, this town was one of those small towns where everybody knows everybody. And so I rode into the town. The first person that saw me called ahead and told, like, all of her friends. And they called all their friends. And so I went to have lunch. And... The diner was like, oh, we heard you were coming. Here's lunch on us. All right, cool. Um, and then I had my lunch, and a reporter showed up, and then a lady showed up, said she heard about what I was doing and what could she do for me. And I said, I have some free time. I need my haircut. Is there anywhere to get my haircut in town? She said, oh, yeah. So she went over to this place and told them I was coming. And so I went over there and tied Apollo out front and went and got my hair cut. And uh, then while I was there, there was a lady that said, oh, we're, my family and I are having supper at the Mexican restaurant next door after I get my hair done. Do you want to come join us for supper? I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I went and had Mexican food and went to the library. And everybody knew when I got there, like, oh, we heard about you. I was like, okay. <laughs> So, because everybody was calling each other and, really? yeah. How does the Mexican food compare to ours? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Mary? Not necessarily the restaurant, like, that one was okay, but in general, California has the best Mexican food, and I just look forward to going to 
have Mexican food when I get home. I have to go to Mi Favorita right away because nothing is like California Mexican food. Um, so it's always disappointing going to a Mexican restaurant anywhere else. They don't know how to do it. Yeah. And, and what about Apollo's food? So did he have any issues? And how do you, you arrange that when you're arranging where you're going to stay? And what about the different types of food that you're uh-huh. getting? Usually I stay with horse people, and so I'm able to get either pasture or hay or both for him. And most of them have grain that they'll let me use a little of their grain for the night. He does switch grain every day. So uh, horses, usually you try to feed them a consistent grain. If you're going to give them grain at all, you give them consistently the same thing, the same hay, the same grain, same water every day, or they get belly aches and die because horses... That's what they do. They get belly aches and then they die. Um, so uh, Apollo's really good at changing his diet all the time. I'm careful with it for the first couple weeks when he has had the same diet for months and months through the winter. But after a few weeks of such variety, then variety to him is normal. And so he's able to have a new thing every night. But I'm able to get food wherever I stop for the night. And even if it's someone's backyard, he just mows the lawn. So, uh, Here's the town of Rising Sun, Indiana. So this is southern Indiana. And you can see it's starting to have a, a southern feel to it there. It's supposed to look like um, a riverboat, the mural on the side there. Uh, this is their old hotel. Uh, that's, I didn't write when it was from, I think it's the 1860s maybe. And I stayed there for a night. They invited me to come stay in their hotel for a night. And Apollo stayed with a lady just outside of town. And uh, here's their courthouse. Again, this is another county seat with the unusual courthouses. And this is the only one, oh gosh, I forget now. It was the only one to have an outside stairway. Oh, there was something weird about it that was like they were known for having this unusual courthouse. Um, but anyway, pretty little town. And right along the river. And so we rode across the river from Rising Sun to, to Kentucky, uh, Rabbit Hash, Kentucky. And Apollo got on that. How was he? He looks cool. He's fine. Relax. He didn't care. Uh, I thought he might freak out, but he was fine. Um, he wasn't sure about stepping on, you know, the initial step onto that ramp there was kind of a doozy. But once he was on the ramp, then he just was like, oh, okay. I didn't die. Let's just keep going. And he just walked right up there and and stood and waited for me to tie him to the rail and just looked out the river the whole time just enjoying the view as we went across the river and no problem oh i didn't put a rabbit hash picture so where we landed is a funny little town called rabbit hash that is known for being like a destination point for weekend motorcyclists and they have a general store and they have which there's a picture on the board back there the general store i got a postcard there uh and there's a bar and that's it that's the whole town and so uh i guess there's like a picnic area too but anyway as far as businesses go there's a general store and there's a bar and the bar does not serve food because i was going to stop and have lunch and they're like no no we just serve alcohol here and so um, that's it for the whole town. And there are motorcycles. Even it was raining when we got there. There were still motorcycles because people go there on the weekends or on the weekdays, whatever. They ride their motorcycles there. So it was a, a big like tourist thing if you're a motorcyclist. Uh, here we are with the Kentucky sign. There was no welcome sign in Rabbit Hash. So I found this nice little Kentucky decorative sign on a building um, we we're just there for a day oh here's rabbit hash 
Yeah, there's the general store. Wow. And the uh, wet road. Uh, here is a family plot of a cemetery on, I mean, not a cemetery, but a family burial plot um, on a farm on the side of the road. This was from a, a Revolutionary War veteran. And there were a few in the back side of the trees back there that were kind of crumbled up and I couldn't read what the dates of them were, but they were probably about the same age, I'd guess. And here we are in Ohio. You'll notice Apollo's not in that one. Um, I can't always take a picture with him with the welcome sign because like Ohio, I only crossed over state border over major rivers and major bridges and it was just not safe to get him in front of the welcome sign so um, I had to just take it with me anyway ah the donut trail normally I don't detour to do anything out of the ordinary because we have a lot of miles to do already but I had to detour for the donut trail uh, this is a 12 donut shop trail that's official visitors bureau run trail and it has these little signs at each one with uh, that you can take a picture with or whatever and uh, so there's 12 shops around the county that have uh, that are part of this trail and you stop and you get your little donut passport stamped and then when you're done, you turn it in at the Visitors Bureau and you get a t-shirt. Oh. Yeah. So you, but you have to buy a donut at each one so, to get the stamp. So you, get, you eat all those donuts and then you earn yourself a t-shirt. And Apollo's not usually a big fan of donuts, but he did like the cream horns. I got him a cream horn at one. He, it turns out he likes those a lot. Uh, he gets lots of uh, volunteer chiropractic and massage work along the way. People just offer to work on him. Sometimes I get offered for massages too. Not very often. Usually it's just him. He's very lucky. So he was enjoying himself there. Uh, this was one of the uh, crisis centers I stopped at in Lebanon, Ohio. Um, I just love this picture, the candid shot. Usually, you know, it's everybody smiling for the camera, but Apollo's scratching his head. He, Apollo loved this guy on the end. I don't know. I mean, he likes everybody, but he loved this guy. Like, he was just, just rubbing on him and just, oh my gosh, that was his best friend. Uh, this is Ohio. Uh, I got to go to the National Air Force Museum on a day off and see the exhibits there. It's three huge, three or four huge hangars full of uh, all sorts of you know, historic planes and uh, uniforms and spacesuits and missiles and it was just it's really cool if you are ever in the Dayton Ohio area I definitely recommend it for a day trip because it was a really interesting museum uh, another covered bridge with the lady who came with me and a car show And another rail trail. Oh, that was a nice little stop in Cedarville. Oh, here's my map helper. I do use paper maps, not for my daily, but for my overall route planning. I put stuff on paper maps. Uh, Ohio food. Buckeyes, which again, you have to try the ones I just made today that are in the back. Uh, fried corn mush, which is a lot tastier than it sounds. 
um, Kentucky pie, which is like a brownie pie. And uh, there's a recipe for Buckeyes and for brownie pie in my newest book, by the way. Uh, and White Castle burgers, which I didn't think were as good as people say they are. So anyway, but I had to try it. Uh, Clifton Mill is an old grist mill uh, near Springfield, Ohio, that is best known for its Christmas lights display. It's uh, just covered in Christmas lights during Christmas season. And people come from all over the region to come see their lights. I just saw pictures of it, of course, but the mill itself is really interesting. They have a whole bunch of exhibits to see the history of the area and the mill. And they have a restaurant, which is where I had the fried corn mush uh, and a little gift shop and stuff. So cute little mill. Clifton, the town of Clifton itself is like a block. So this is the edge of the block. Uh, here's Lithopolis, which um, had a German coffee house, which is weird because it's Ohio and they don't really have culture. Um, oh, sorry, any Ohio people are listening to my YouTube video now. Um, okay, they have some culture, but um, German coffee houses are, like traditional German coffee houses are not very common anywhere. So I was really surprised to see one in Little Lithopolis and had to stop and get authentic German coffee house coffee. But uh, they also had a Mexican restaurant that was on par with California. So there is hope for the rest of the country with Mexican food. Uh, stopped and stayed in Lithopolis for the uh, 4th of July weekend and um, my mom who's sitting in the front row here uh, her cousin lives in Lithopolis and has another cousin in uh, Columbus and so I was able to stay with family and uh, that was different I almost never know who I'm staying with in advance of me meeting them you know they're all strangers to me until I get there so it was unusual actually staying with someone I knew um, and I got to explore the Columbus area for the holiday and just a pretty picture in Ohio I like that old barn there with all the ivy all over it. Uh, Zanesville, I stopped in. So I ride 10 to 15 miles a day, as I said. But then I stop every three to four days and take a break for a day or two. And so uh, a lot of these pictures where you'll see a bunch from one town, if Apollo's not in them, it's probably on a day that I was taking a break and just got to kind of explore the area. Uh, so. In, when I stopped in Zanesville, I, you know, Apollo took the day off, but I decided I was going to take myself on a walking tour because I don't walk enough during the week. And I walked all over Zanesville in like 100 degree heat because it was brilliant. What is that in the lower right? Yes. Yeah, so right. starting with the, this one, um, the lower right, that is uh, from Tom's Ice Cream Bowl, which is a kind of their famous uh, ice cream shop. And this is a, I forget what they called it, but it's chocolate cake with ice cream filling. So it's kind of like a ho-ho, but with ice cream inside. Um, and they have this little garden with a little gnome village in it that was cute. And uh, a, an unusual Y-shaped bridge. So at the confluence of the river there, you can take one bridge and go to any side of either river on the same bridge because the bridge forks in the middle and goes off to the different sides of the confluence. Oh, okay. uh, so that's a, 
I don't know if there's more than one Y bridge in the world, but there's certainly not very many of them. And so that was an interesting little thing there. Uh, they have the prettiest old buildings there, and I just was just loved walking around there and seeing all these, these really beautiful buildings. And uh, this thing in the middle here is their, um, I forget now which war it was a memorial for, Vietnam maybe, or World War II. Anyway, it's all helmets. Um, they're all uh, helmets, for soldiers' helmets. And each helmet represented somebody in the county, I believe, or the state that was killed in action in that war. Uh, another day off, I stayed with someone who, uh, whose friend worked at the Wilds, which is affiliated with the Columbus Zoo. And so we got to go on a zoo tour. And this is kind of like um, the San Diego Zoo in that you can just go, the animals are out, you know, living the good life in giant natural type settings, not in little cages. And so a bunch of them will, you know, they'll have different species all together. Uh, and you ride in this bus and... Uh, open-sided bus and go on this safari thing around the wilds and get right up close so that camel is literally like a foot from me wow. and uh just go around and see all the animals what's that critter with the antlers is that, an elk? Yeah. that is not an elk and i cannot remember what it's called now sorry i uh, but it's it was something I hadn't heard of, which is why I can't remember the name. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, here's Apollo meeting a new friend. He likes meeting all the, everybody. Um, you know, people, horses, whoever. So he especially likes miniature horses. They're his favorite. The smaller, the better. And so this was a little little pony uh, in the next pasture over and they just were instantly best friends because that's how he is with miniature horses and ponies. They're just his best friend. Um, what the heck is that? Ah, we're getting into the, uh, the land is less flat now. So this was a rock formation. I hadn't seen rocks in a while, so it was exciting because it was so flat and there just aren't really rocks laying around or, you know, rock formations or anything. So this is almost to West Virginia in St. Clairsville. Uh, so I stopped in St. Clairsville for an event at the Tri-County Help Center. And this was a really nice little event they set up. Uh, they had all their staff come, and they had little cookies that were um, purple ribbon. So purple ribbon is the, the ribbon color for domestic violence awareness, which is the reason for my ride. So they had little purple ribbon cookies, and they had little gift bags. Apollo's gift bag was full of apples, and he was so happy, and he had apples for breakfast for a week and he started to think that was his new normal and when he ran out of apples oh the look he gave me we were not friends anymore mm -mm. Uh, here we are getting into West Virginia I stopped at the YWCA and the kids camp came out most of them are kids of clients of the YWCA, uh, like the women staying in the shelter with their kids. And so they got to come out and meet a horse, and most of them had never seen a horse up close before. And they each got to come out one at a time and pet Apollo and spend a couple minutes if they wanted individually just loving on Apollo and talking to him. And it was really nice. And he just 
stood there and was a nice horse for all of them. So it was a nice little event. Uh, here's Wheeling. Um, they have a older area that they've revitalized with a market. Um, and this was on a day off. I went to see uh, Ogilvy, which is a historic old home with a, a gardens. And I stayed in Bethany. Uh, I think Apollo's over here somewhere in the picture. Um, and that's one of the historic buildings of the town. You got to go inside. In this area, this is how they do salads. That is a good idea, isn't it? Fries on your salad? Yeah. They call it, this is in West Virginia, they call them Pittsburgh salads. I never saw salads with fries on them in Pittsburgh, so I'm not sure that that's actually like a good name for it. But anyway, that's what they call it in West Virginia. And cheese on top, yeah. So it's it's regular old iceberg lettuce. It has to be iceberg lettuce because that's what you eat there. Um, and uh, sliced black olives, tomatoes, your choice of meat, and French fries. And they don't have to be uh, this kind of French fry. They can be any kind of French fry, but some kind of French fries and cheddar cheese. It has to be cheddar cheese. But you are also able to choose your own dressing. They don't, it's not like, you know, you have to have ranch or something. But, um, yeah, that's, that's an important food thing. You need to know that. <laughs> Pittsburgh salad in West Virginia. Uh, here we are in Pennsylvania. I was in Pennsylvania for a couple weeks, two and a half weeks. Uh, there's a nice little trail. Of course, it's getting hillier. And here we are going through a, uh, this is another rail trail. And so it had a tunnel for the train. And so when they made it into a trail, it became a tunnel for the, for the trail. What and. Oh, yes. Um, we picked this up a few weeks before this. This is a, a fly bonnet. Uh, it keeps the flies off his ears. Aw, that's so cute. <laughs> I like the uh, So he'd never been in a tunnel before. And that could have been scary. I wasn't sure how he was going to react to that. Uh, he wasn't really thrilled about it, but he did it. He was fine. <laughs> He did okay. He didn't freak out. He was just kind of like a little concerned. So he made it. And then this was a super long tunnel. You couldn't actually see from one end. You couldn't see the other end. And the only light in the middle was, you know, the, the little lights on the side there. So it got pretty dark, but it was all right. Um, and then after this, we went through some more tunnels, but they were a lot shorter and easier. So those were no problem. Uh, this is my tent. I do carry a tent. I don't use it very often, but I have it with me in case I need it. Here, I was using it in a riding arena. I could have set it up in the yard, but it stayed drier this way, so. And Apollo was staying Oh, he's not actually in the picture, but he's in one of the stalls off on the side there. He woke me up in the middle of the night because he thought it was dinner time <laughs> or breakfast time or something. And shouldn't I come and feed him more? Uh, here's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was a very memorable day. Uh, I don't, as you can see, avoid cities. Especially when one of the 
uh, shelters or crisis centers or whatever would like me to come and see them, then I'm willing to do that, assuming I'm able to logistically figure out how to get in there and back uh, with somewhere to stop in a reasonable distance. So I was able to go into Pittsburgh. And so this is right downtown. Uh, This is the Steelers uh, pro football training field. So downtown Pittsburgh. Um, And this is the center that I was stopping at. Pittsburgh is all hills. Really short, like not tall hills, but really steep hills. And so you like straight up and you go straight down. And you like three houses later, you go back up again. And three houses later, you go back down again. And it was really... Um, really steep to the point where I was afraid Apollo would slip on the pavement with the steepness if he was trying to balance my weight as well. So I'd ride him up a hill and then if he had to balance going down the hill and it was another steep hill, which they pretty much all were, I'd get off and walk next to him down the hill for three houses and then get back on and ride up the hill for three houses. And then it was a lot of on and off. But with it being steep, there were lots of like low walls and things to use for mounting blocks. So um, I got a police escort into town because it was uh, not really designed to have horses on the road. And the police stopped me and asked what the heck I was doing. <laughs> Actually, two police cars stopped me. That I've been stopped before and for like I've never gotten a ticket or anything but um I've been stopped before but only by one car so this time it was two cars and that one had me going I'm like why do you need two vehicles to stop a person riding a horse down the road is Apollo going to go in the back of the second one um but anyway they stopped me and they were like so what are you doing where are you coming from? We had reports of a person in danger, or a horse in danger. They don't care about me. There was a horse in danger. And uh, <laughs> so I explained to them that where, what I was doing and that I was going to the Center for Victims. And they were like, oh, we love the Center for Victims. That's a great organization. Can we give you an escort? Oh. And so I had, I had a car in front. And I had a car in back, and they both had the lights flashing. And we went down the road, and they stopped traffic for me all the last mile or two to go all the way into the center. And uh, we arrived in style and held up all the traffic. I felt kind of bad about that, because where I was riding, I wasn't holding up the traffic. And then they came to escort me, and suddenly there was a traffic jam for probably miles and miles by the time I got where I was going. But... It was safe for me, at least, so. Uh, Here we are in Apollo. Apollo's in Apollo. Um, I stopped there for another event, and uh, this was at a boarding stable, but they were having an open house, so uh, I had a little booth at their open house. And we stopped at the Hope Center in Tarentum. And this picture was taken by one of the staff members. They knew we were coming for the event. And so they came over to the bridge to get a picture of us coming over the bridge with the semis and stuff. So this is kind of normal. Um, I try not to ride where there's semis, but it happens a lot. Uh, Cute little poster that the kids at the center drew for us. And here's Butler, Pennsylvania. Here's, this this is a sheep. This is a hairless, uh, a hair sheep, I should say. Uh, so not a wool sheep, a hair sheep. So they look a lot like goats. Um, but it's a little lamb, and uh, the lamb and the mini were friends, and Apollo wanted to be their friend too, so they played. They raced around the pasture. Oh, 
And here I am learning how to throw a hatchet. Oh my god! <laughs> see my oh. see my hatchet there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so throwing it at the target there. This is what they do instead of darts. They have these, um, like this is at someone's house, but I saw them at several, um, like bars, saloon sorts of places where they'd have this set up outside where you could go out and drink on the patio and they'd have where you could throw hatchets because that's a great idea when you're drinking. <laughs> oh, this is also Apollo. This is Apollo meeting Apollo. And here we are at another shelter in Erie. And they also shelter refugees, not just, it's not just a domestic violence center, it's uh, anyone that needs shelter, any women that need shelter, women and children. And so they also shelter refugees. And so this was a few of their uh, refugee children who were really not sure about this horse. <laughs> so they were hanging on to each other, um, but cute. Here's Lake Erie. And that's not Lake Erie, that's just a little lake, but I like the picture. And some horses Apollo got to meet. And here we are at the New York border. I was in New York for, that was the most time I spent in any state this year was in New York uh, I was there for a month and a half. Uh, I went through Jamestown, which is Lucille Ball's birthplace, and also Bob. Oh, I can't pick on him. He left. <laughs> um, so they have Lucy stuff all over Jamestown, uh, including a museum where you can go in and see stuff from her sets and costumes and stuff. Uh, I, I was not able to go in. Um, I didn't have time to go in, but I at least stopped out front. And also stopped the Salvation Army there runs the shelter. So um, I stopped at that shelter. <laughs> and there's Apollo helping us figure out where we're going. Uh, rainstorm. I ride in whatever weather I have to, but I try not to ride in lightning storms or snow. I've so far managed to avoid the snow, but I do sometimes get caught in a lightning storm. And this particular lightning storm, we were very lucky and found this little sheltered area, a um, equipment shed right along the road that had room enough for us to stand in it. So. Um, here we are waiting for the, the uh, storm to stop. I got to sit in a monster truck <laughs> that one of my hosts, they travel around the country with their monster truck and do performances. And so they were like, oh, you need to sit in it and we'll take your picture. So of course I had to sit in the monster truck. Uh, Pretty little barn and tractor. Wow. North Boston, but this is still New York. They do have a Boston, New York. Huh. Uh, I went to the state fair. Apollo didn't go to the state fair. I went without him. Um, that was a lot of fun. I spent two days there. I was invited to tag along with a 4-H uh, equestrian drill team that was going to compete there and they invited me to just come along and go enjoy the fair while they were doing their horse stuff so I did spent two days just walking around the state fair it was really a nice fair uh, this on the bottom right there is a butter statue that's life-size that's all butter and on the other side of the heart there's a grandfather and grandchild um, sitting at a, I forget what they're doing there, but there's like, it's another life size on the other side of it, so. Uh, pretty much 
pretty stop. This is the best domestic violence agency that I have seen so far. They were amazing and they gave me a full tour of their facilities and most of the places offer to give me a tour but uh, this place was just like the model of what a domestic violence agency should be like. It was just incredible and so I felt very lucky to be able to see them and see what it should be like and then when I go and talk to other agencies and they ask me what sort of things I've been you know learning about how other agencies do things or what people need that maybe they don't realize in their community or something I tell them now about Willow because it was really really outstanding here's meeting another mini this mini was out uh, grazing on the lawn on purpose like the owner just let them loose on the lawn which would have been fine except then we came down the road and we were way more interesting than grass so it started following us up the road and I had to take it back <laughs> we were all sad about that I think the, the little pony would have enjoyed it but I sometimes will stop at various churches of whatever denomination if I happen to be riding by when it's service time. And I just happened to be riding by this Universalist Unitarian Church right when service was about to start. On the day they were doing a blessing of the animals and people brought their pets in to be blessed. Oh <laughs> and so they were like, stop come join us for service it's blessing of the animals I was like well sure of course I have to stop for that so Apollo got blessed <laughs> they said I could bring him in the church to get blessed and I considered it I seriously considered it he would have done it I'm sure but I was afraid that he would have pooped on their carpet <laughs> and I didn't think that was going to be a good idea so um so he just stayed outside for the service but then the the um they came out with the, the holy water and blessed him. <laughs> Who has heard of grape pie? This is a thing in Naples, New York, uh, which is in the Finger Lakes region. They use, I think it's Concord grapes uh, to make their pie. And I tried some and it was okay. Who in the back said, ew, great pie? <laughs> that was kind of my reaction, too. But my hostess was like, you got to try this. This is the best stuff ever. I'm like, okay. I like trying new things. Uh. Um, but it was pretty good. Uh, this little island here on the right is a state park. It is the smallest state park in the state of New York, possibly any state, I'm not really sure about that, but it's literally just that little tiny island. That's it. Um, and there's a whole story behind it that I don't really remember, but anyway, that's a state park, um, and you can only get to it by boat or jet ski or whatever. Uh, they also have these fancy boat houses that when the, when the lady I was staying with said, let's go see the lake and the boathouses and stuff, I'm thinking, boathouses? Like, I'm thinking, like, um, houseboats. But these are part of the pier. Like, there's a, I didn't include that picture, but it's got a, you know, wooden pier that you can walk out onto the lake. And on either side of the pier, there are these permanent structures that are part of the pier that are these little cottage size boat houses. And they all have a little 
like garage door on the water side that they can pull their boat into. And so when they're going out to the lake for the weekend or the week or whatever, they can live on the lake in their little boat house and their boat is right there. And it's, they're cute. They're like, they're, they're all little decorated nice and whatever and um, different. Oh, Canandaigua. <laughs> oh, here's Apollo's cutest fan. Uh, she got a copy of Apollo's children's book before I got there. Her parents bought a copy of Apollo's alphabet, and there's a copy of it in the back if you want to see it. Um, and so when we got there, she was like, oh, Apollo, I read your book. It was so cute. <laughs> and so she was like quoting things out of the book for him. And I just like, oh, you read my book. <laughs> and uh, so she was just so thrilled to have Apollo staying in her backyard and so then we went out to dinner. Her family owned a German, authentic German restaurant. Uh, her grandmother was from Germany, immigrated from Germany, and they had an authentic German restaurant in town. And so we went in to have German food. And she has this doll, this Yoda doll, that lives at the restaurant that is her friend at the restaurant. And so he joined us for dinner, and she told him all about Apollo. <laughs> and she just talked and talked to Yoda about Apollo. So now Yoda knows all about Apollo. I usually, as I said before, like I detoured for donuts. I don't usually detour, but I did do a day of just riding around to do a wine trail uh, and then stopped where I started. I went to four wineries. Uh, one of the people that joined me suggested that we do this. She was interested in doing that. And uh, I had met her. Actually, she's the one who invited me to go to the the state fair. I had met her over in Buffalo. And uh, so she trailered out with a couple friends and met me at Cayuga Lake. And we spent a day just riding around and sampling the wine. And we went to four wineries. And they were all wonderful. And I'm right along the beautiful Cayuga Lake. Uh, the Finger Lakes area, especially Cayuga Lake, is big wine country for New York. This is Chittenango Falls. Uh, it's also a state park. I happened to be riding right by it, so I stopped to see the waterfall. It's actually about two or three times that height, but I couldn't get a good angle to get a better picture. So. You only get to see the top of the falls. Uh, here's a New York ski resort. That's it. That's a big hill. <laughs> this is their public library. Now, I like Nevada County libraries, but I love Casanova Public Library because they have a genuine mummy. Uh, that is part of their museum that's in the library building that uh, was started by a former resident uh, in the early 1900s. He collected things from his world travels, including a mummy. And then when he died, he wanted all of his collection to be made into a museum at the library. So it is. And the mummy has been run through MRIs and all sorts of high-tech testing recently to learn more about its history. And it's a he. Uh, I don't know that they know what the mummy's original name was, but it's called Het now. I don't know if that was his original name. Uh, and uh, he died very young, in his early 20s, I believe. And... Uh, 
anyway, it was really interesting. Um, but who would think of having a mummy in a museum? I mean, in a mummy in a museum in a library. Uh, there's uh, apple. Of course, uh, New York is known for its apples. Uh, you know, everybody knows the Big Apple is New York City, but actually the whole state is known for apples. So I went to an, several orchards, actually. This particular one, Beacon, Beacon Skiff, they have apple cider donuts, they have apple cider, they have apple picking, they have apple uh, hard apple cider, and they have apple brandy. So, yeah, I tried basically all of it, so... Um, this is Skinny Atlas. I should have had you guys guess how to say that. <laughs> Who would have guessed Skinny Atlas? <laughs> uh, so the town of Skinny Atlas on Lake, on Skinny Atlas Lake. Um, cute little town. Even better name. Here's the Erie Canal. Who wants to sing the song? <laughs> yeah, 15 miles on the Erie Canal. Uh, originally, the song was actually 15 years on the Erie Canal. It got changed over time to being 15 miles. Uh, so all those little trivia things that, uh, that you learn when you're traveling out of the way places like this. So the Erie Canal is, was a major thoroughfare for uh, water freight back in its day. But now it's not so much. Uh, parts of it are still in use, such as on the upper left. That's part of the original canal. But parts of it are completely overgrown. Um, and they have a bike trail that runs the entire length of it, which is basically all the way across the state east to west hundreds of miles, I forget how many, around 800, I want to say, wow. 500, somewhere in that range, lots, uh, but it's, uh, some of the trail is nice, like on the lower um, left there, some of it's paved and well-maintained, and some of it is like on the upper right, where it's just a little dirt track, and it's all overgrown, and the canal there has trees growing in the middle of it because it's so overgrown. So it's really different depending on what part of it you're on, on how well it's been maintained. Um, but it's really crazy seeing the overgrown part, knowing how big it was back when it was in use, and now it's just weeds. Uh, Fort Stanwix is in Rome, New York. This was a, a part, a major part of the um, of the Revolutionary War. Um, who here remembers their history in the Battle of Saratoga? Anyone? <laughs> oh, okay. When we're done here, go check out some library books about your U.S. history. Um, so the Battle of Saratoga was the first major victory for the Continental Army. And up until that point, we'd just been losing terribly, and it was very discouraging. And then Saratoga, we won. And so before the Battle of Saratoga, we actually had a victory here, but it was a minor skirmish. And so, but without this having been a victory, Saratoga wouldn't have been a victory. So it was an important part of uh, American independence. And this fort was in, built entirely out of wood. It was originally an outpost on the frontier uh, and along a major river, uh, the Mohawk River. And, uh, you know, built in type entirely built out of wood and so of course eventually it deteriorated and Rome became a big town and it was right in the middle of the town area and so it got 
built over. And uh, the town was going to do a downtown revitalization. And as they were digging up the old buildings to build new buildings, they came across all the foundations. They knew they were there, but nobody really was, I don't know. It was kind of a controversy at the time. So this was in the 60s. But they decided instead of putting new buildings, they would rebuild the fort. And so they did it authentically. Uh, so you can go and see what it would have looked like in the 1700s. And uh, they have all the people who work there are dressed in um, Continental Army uh, outfits. So, um, so it's all living history stuff there. And this down here is where the battle was actually fought. It wasn't fought at the fort. It was a couple miles away. Uh, this was a very pretty ride through Maple Valley. And this was the prettiest part of any day ever that I've had so far was in Bear Swamp State Forest. And... Uh, just spectacular that view um, just so pretty it was it was uh this was the better part of the road it actually looks like a road here um, parts of it were so overgrown it was really just a jeep track so there's no traffic it was just me and apollo and the birds and the butterflies and it was wonderful the glove museum was awesome in the teeny tiny town of Dorlu, which the only things in Dorlu is a couple houses and the Glove Museum. Wow. Um, this was an old church that the uh, that was bought by a master glove maker, who oh, I forget his name. I'm not good with names. It's in my book, um, but. Uh, he bought this museum and he already had a workshop in appropriately nearby named Gloversville. <laughs> and so he makes most of his gloves there, but then he has this little museum. He bought up the church and made it into the museum. Um, and it's only open on some weekends. And I just happened to be riding by while it was open and I didn't know anything about it. I was just going down the road and there was a little sign like the church was there. I was like, oh, old church, pretty, whatever. And there was a little sign on the side of the road as it was going by. It said, Glove Museum. And I said, what? <laughs> a glove museum? That's weird. I have to see that. And so I stopped and tied up Apollo to the railing. And he just stood there and had a nap while I went in and saw the gloves. And it was it's this tiny church. And it had almost, like, basically very few things in the museum. It had these cool glove forms and a bunch of his art exhibit kind of gloves that he's done for different things. And he has these on the top right, that's examples of traditional glove embroidery for the back of the hands. Um, and But he was just so fascinating to talk to. I was there for probably two hours just talking with him. And... Uh, Really cool place. Really cool guy. <laughs> I did the chicken cross the road. I don't actually have an answer for that. Uh, Charleston State Forest. So the East Coast has so much history of, you know, for our country that all over the place there was just like these little historic markers that were around and nobody really pays attention and who cares but you know the early militia trained here in this field off in the middle of the Charleston State Forest which is not on anyone's driving route ever but unless you live there I guess but uh, I just come across these little signs it was just neat pretty forest do you think with your travels and you making more of a statement of this, 
there's going to be more writers like you wanting to do this? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's more crazy women like you. I, <laughs> I meet people often who say, oh, that sounds like fun. I wish I could do that. But they always, like, they're always more, like, I don't know. They're not serious, you know. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not for everybody. Right. It's definitely not for most people. Um, every once in a while, I'll meet someone who's actually kind of serious about it, and I'll talk with them and answer their questions gladly. And occasionally I'll meet someone who's done a long distance horse ride like this, not 48 states, but some sort of months long journey, but not very often. So yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm inspiring too many horse travelers, but <laughs> that's probably okay. It's, 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 uh, it's enjoyable, but it's long, hard hours also. Maybe That's possible. <laughs> that is possible. <laughs> okay, so um, Schenectady was uh, a major town in the Revolutionary period. So this house on the right, uh, General Washington stayed at, and uh, there were some other like basically every other building in their downtown had a historic plaque on the front of it that said somebody famous had stayed there or lived there or something. Uh, I got to stay at an apple orchard and he likes apples so he was definitely happy about that. And he stayed with a pony in the pony ride area after it closed up for the day. Um, and he just he discovered there that he likes apple cider donuts and he tried to steal that one when I was taking a picture <laughs> normally he ignores my donuts but he really likes apple cider donuts so uh, <coughs> pretty lake this is just outside of Vermont so Bennington Vermont is not actually the site of the Battle of Bennington, but it was the nearest town of noteworthiness enough to name it after the battle, that even though the Battle of Bennington happened in New York, it's named for Vermont town. A little weird. Um, but anyway, this was another uh, battle site that, was, that happened right around the time of uh, Saratoga. Here we are at the Vermont border. And in Bennington at their shelter, they had apple cider donuts and apple cider because it was that season. And that was what everybody everywhere was enjoying at that point. Um, and of course, <coughs> Vermont's also where you get everything maple, but for whatever reason at this place it was all apple cider so uh, yes all about the maple so who here has can you read it who here knows what they call soft serve in Vermont anybody it's called a creamy spelled c-r-e-e-m-e-e -E -E. oh god and that is the official name. That's not just like this one company called it a creamy. This is what they call it there. It's soft serve ice cream, and they're called creamies. And they're sold at creamy stands. So I had to get a creamy, maple creamy, of course. And uh, tried some maple liqueur. That's quite good. 
And this is starting to be fall color season. And of course, this is a great area for seeing the fall colors. Uh, Chester is a cute, cute little town. I really enjoyed spending a couple hours there. And there they serve at their coffee shops where you can get your creamer and whatever on the counter. They also have maple syrup. So you can put maple syrup in your coffee because that is good. And I wish coffee shops here did that. Now I have to carry around my own maple syrup. <laughs> Here's the town of Brattleboro. And oh, it was Halloween. And so I had to get Dunkin' Donuts and they have a Halloween donut. Um, Putney Mountain was uh, all in its fall color splendor when I went over that. And on the bottom uh, left there, that's a mushroom. Funny looking mushroom. And here we are in New Hampshire. With a stop in Keene, uh, we talked to a couple different organizations that are involved with uh, domestic violence victims there and also went into the town of Keene to go to a high school and meet with a, a high school class. Um, I, don't stop, top, I don't stop and talk to very many schools because it gets complicated with scheduling, but I was able to here, so that was nice. And they had a little rail trail that went into town so there were all sorts of people out walking their dogs and riding their bicycles and looking at me kind of funny because I was riding a horse in town, but that's normal. I gave Apollo a couple days off in Keene and attended a riding clinic that was going on that weekend at the stable. They invited me to just come and ride one of their horses, which was fun, but you see that? tiny little saddle there like normally I've got the bag there and a bag there and like so much leather and then I was riding on this tiny saddle it was just weird it just felt weird and then I jumped which I never have done before on purpose and uh, so that was very exciting I was very proud of myself um, and the funny part of this writing clinic was their focus for the people who actually were there to do the clinic was that they were getting um, a lot of time riding outside the arena because most people who ride horses spend all their time riding in an arena. And so they were there to experience what it's like to ride outside of an arena. Well, that's, I never ride in an arena, so... <laughs> Anyway, they were, they were all just so excited to go out on the rail trail going the other way, outside of town. And it was all peaceful and nice. And they're like, wow, we're riding outside of an arena. And, um, so there's my little lesson horse for the clinic. And there's Apollo trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Why am I riding someone else? And uh, New Hampshire, I have a picture in front of the liquor store because this is a big thing there. They have state-run liquor stores. And so they have low, low prices for liquor and um, people will go into New Hampshire from surrounding states to buy their alcohol at these New Hampshire uh, liquor stores. And so... Uh, I had never heard of that and so the people I was staying with said well we have to go take you to see one and it's it's really exciting they're huge and so I went in one and it's really like I don't know I guess it's from it's I'm from California but it's like what's the one down in um, like a BevMo or something like that it's just like a BevMo so I mean, maybe the prices were lower I don't know I don't buy that much alcohol no prices but um, but that's what it was like going inside. It's just a, a big liquor store. So here we are for our Halloween costume. Uh, Apollo got to be a purple pony and get in his first horse show in the costume class. And so I painted him purple. And 
he was okay with that. <laughs> More pretty leaves. And there he is. He's in Vermont. He is in New Hampshire. And so, isn't that purple just awesome? I love his his mane being purple. I think I just need to paint it all year long. His, um, so this year uh, was, where are we? This year, uh, eight states, almost 2,000 miles. Um, leagues, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so far, 31 states, 8,269 miles, and all sorts of ways you can follow along on the adventure. And that's that.